what's going on. So today we are reviewing the Sonic game, like the big one. Um, I wanted to talk about it forever, so because this review is already super long, uh, let's start it. Sonic the Hedgehog, an extremely popular series created by Sega in 1991 to rival Nintendo's Mario. The releases have seen the whole spectrum of the Metacritic scale from abysmal next to Superman 64 to peerless, industry changing right next to Nintendo's first party titles. If anything, you can say this has generated one of the most bipolar and psychotic fan bases in all of entertainment media, but we're here today to talk about the good stuff. When asked what the best Sonic game in the series, 2D or 3D is, what are the common responses? You'll get a different answer depending on who you ask. Younger fans born in the early to late 2000s might say Sonic Heroes as it was the first multi-platform release on major consoles, while older fans might point to Sonic 2 or Sonic CD as Sonic was at the height of his popularity during the time of those games' release. Another group will point to the adventure titles because they were Sonic's first jump into 3D, introduce voice acting, and some of the series' most popular characters. But there's another game that will always be brought into this argument, Sonic 3 & Knuckles. Originally planned to be a single title under the name Sonic the Hedgehog 3, the game was split up into two releases that were separated by eight months leading to the release of two titles, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 in February of 1994 and Sonic and & Knuckles in October 1994. Using Sega's new lock-on technology, this allowed for the Sonic 3 cartridge to be connected on top of the Sonic & Knuckles cartridge, unlocking a gigantic 14-zone adventure dubbed Sonic 3 & Knuckles. Unlike other Sonic games, S3 and K did not have an overarching gimmick that the game was advertised around. There was no time travel like in CD, the art style was relatively the same as the past two titles, and while it did introduce Knuckles to the series, we had already seen new character additions in Sonic 2 and CD with Tails, Amy, and Metal Sonic. Sonic 3 and K has the following it does today because it perfected what was already there. Every aspect, story, gameplay, and design. These were all pushed to the limit of what the Sega Genesis could offer. Of course, everyone is entitled to their own opinion, and maybe it's the nostalgia I have for this game, but I truly think S3 and K does a better job than any game in the series at showing the player what makes a Sonic game great. The story of Sonic 3 and Knuckles will be seen from the perspective of whichever character is chosen. That's between Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, or the combo of Sonic and Tails. The Sonic Tails paths go through the same zones apart from the extra zone at the end that can only be accessed if Sonic is the leader and other requirements are met. More on that in a bit. The game picks up after the events of Sonic 2's good ending, with the Death Egg crash landing on the floating island, Angel Island, home to Knuckles the Echidna, guardian of the Master Emerald. It is not directly said in the game, only in the manual, but Robotnik lies to Knuckles, warning him that a blue hedgehog named Sonic is planning to steal his Master Emerald so he can buy some time to repair the Death Egg. Super Sonic arrives on the island in search of Robotnik and is greeted by Knuckles literally punching the Chaos Emeralds out of him and running off. As a quick side note, we are looking at this game in a vacuum. Sega is infamous for the inconsistencies in Sonic games. Knuckles would never pull this off in a game release today. We could go on talking about how Angel Island is the size of a city block in Sonic Adventure while in this game it houses a whole carnival and so on, but for the sake of the review, Sonic punching the emeralds out of Super Sonic illustrates that this dude is strong and poses a threat. Moving on, Sonic chases Knuckles through Angel Island and preceding zones, where Knuckles will make the occasional appearance to dick with Sonic in the form of pressing switches to open trap doors and cutting off the power in Carnival Night Zone. Robotnik once again serves as the Act 2 boss in each zone. If you are playing from the Knuckles' standpoint, you will fight the same bosses with Egg Robo in the cockpit, with a few exceptions. So we reach our next plot point at the end of the Sonic 3 portion at the launching point of the repaired Death Egg in Launch Base Zone. This is where Sonic defeats Robotnik, causing the Death Egg to once again fall back to Angel Island. This is where Sonic and Knuckles picks up, with everyone once again heading to the Death Egg. The major turning point in the plot occurs in Hidden Palace Zone, with Knuckles confronting Sonic in the room next to where the Master Emerald resides. Sonic defeats Knuckles, and shortly the duo, or trio if Tails is there, sees Robotnik stealing the Master Emerald. Robotnik electrocutes Knuckles when he attempts to stop him and makes off with the Emerald. Also not shown, but the absence of the Master Emerald causes Angel Island to fall down into the ocean. Knuckles, finally realizing he's been tricked, teams up with Sonic, escorting him out of Hidden Palace to Sky Sanctuary. It's here Knuckles splits from Sonic to have a showdown against the Master Emerald-powered Mecha Sonic, while the real Sonic proceeds to board the once again repaired Death Egg. Once Robotnik is defeated on the Death Egg, one of the two endings will ensue depending on if the seven Chaos Emeralds, or Super Emeralds, were collected. 
Without the emeralds, the game ends with Tails flying the tornado, catching Sonic from the falling death egg, echoing Sonic 2's ending. The two fly by Angel Island, still in the water, and the game ends on a screen of Robotnik laughing next to the Master Emerald. Pretty lame. If all emeralds have been obtained, Sonic transforms into Super or Hyper Sonic and has a climactic chase with Robotnik attempting to escape with the Master Emerald. Sonic destroys Robotnik's mech, Tails collects him and the Master Emerald via the tornado, and the two return the Master Emerald to Knuckles to tie everything up. It's pretty easy to tell, but a lot of shit goes down in the last half of the Sonic and Knuckles portion. The plot goes through a massive standstill from Angel Island to Hidden Palace. We do see the Death Egg fall at the end of launch base, but this is pointless and regresses the plot when we find out it's being rebuilt shortly after. I'm sure this decision was made when the developers decided on splitting the game up so Sonic 3 could stand on its own feet and feel like a complete package, so I don't really fault it too much. The true spectacle is Knuckles' character arc. He's a dick to Sonic in all of Sonic 3 and half of Sonic and Knuckles, and it's so satisfying to kick the shit out of him in Hidden Palace, but then to find out he was tricked and team up with him and make the ending shot all the more fulfilling. Knuckles is a great addition to the cast. He fills the spot of Sonic's friend and rival, two spots you could argue are already occupied by Tails and Metal Sonic. Knuckles is hard-headed and often disagrees with Sonic's carefree attitude, unlike Tails and he has a human side with emotions and ambitions unlike Metal Sonic. Sega must have liked this so much they gave Sonic another rival every other year, now leaving us with the dumpster fire of characters we have today. Getting back on track, there are several other games released around 1994 that offer more developed characters and enriching stories, and I'm sure the game would have sold just as well if it had a more generic plot, but for a 2D side-scroller with no dialogue on the Genesis, this is as good as it gets. In terms of gameplay, everything is here from Sonic 2. You got the spin dash, the screen falling behind you when you're going fist, and a second controller can be used to control Tails, who can now fly Sonic around and cheese every platforming segment of the game. When jumping, the gravity feels a tiny bit lessened in 3 and K than it did in 2. Same goes for the friction when accelerating, decelerating. Overall, I would say 3 and K feels less stiff and more fluid than 2. There are less hard stops and it's easier to predict where your momentum is going. The change is so minimal, those coming from Sonic 2 won't have any problem adjusting. Sonic's one new ability is the Insta Shield. Pressing the jump button again while in midair will create a circle of electricity around him, extending his attack range for a fraction of a second. It's definitely the most technical ability in Sonic's arsenal as you need to be aware when Sonic reaches the top of his jump to use it effectively, although once mastered it makes quick work of almost any boss. Tails can uh, fly now, this time for real. Uh, that's about it. And Oh, and he, he can swim now too. Knuckles definitely has the most utility in the game. He can glide, climb, punch through rocks, the other two can't, all at the cost of having a slightly lower jump than Sonic. As a kid, I almost exclusively played as Knuckles. You can go anywhere, the world is really your oyster. Nowadays, I usually stick with Sonic for the higher jump and Insta Shield. Knuckles is still fun, but both of his abilities have like a set speed and can completely throw off your momentum. If you're trucking it as Knuckles and then jump to go into a glide, he'll start gliding at the one speed he knows how to glide at. On the other hand, this can be advantageous because you can get to his glide speed at a standstill as opposed to holding down the D-pad to build up a run. This is really useful when avoiding attacks from bosses, your movement speed basically goes from 0 to 100. Well, more like 75. I suppose it's not really a bad design choice as you are the one choosing where and when you glide, but I'd just rather play as Sonic. New shields. Yes, the boring blue normal shield has been replaced with three new shiny elemental shields that will not return to the series until Sonic Mania. The bubble shield prevents drowning, fire shield protects against fire, and lightning shield draws in nearby rings. But that's not all. Each shield has an extra movement ability that can be used only by Sonic. My favorite being the Fire Shield Zoom. It's like an instant midair spin dash without the spin. Sonic 3 and K also adds three bonus stages where rings, additional lives, and elemental shields can be obtained. These are accessed by passing through a checkpoint with a specific amount of rings, similar to how special stages were accessed in Sonic 2. Slot Machine is 20 to 34 rings. It's just Sonic 1's special stage with a slot machine from Casino Night Zone in the middle. Honestly, I just kill myself whenever I get one of these. Gumball Machine, 35 to 49 rings. Use the bumpers and decaying springs to rack up as many prizes as you can. Short and sweet. 
glowing spheres, or as I like to call, dun 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 dun. Collect prizes and try to reach the top by flinging off the glowing spheres before the electricity reaches you. Another new item you'll find hidden throughout the zones is the giant ring. There are a handful of these in each act and they lead to the special stage, Blue Sphere. Collect all the blue spheres on a 3D plane while sonic speed gradually increases. I like Sonic 2's halfpipe, but if you have a bad start, it's really tough to climb your way back. In Blue Sphere, you theoretically have all the time in the world as long as you don't run into a red sphere. Completing one rewards you with a Chaos Emerald. Collect all seven to unlock Super Sonic just as you did in Sonic 2. Just like in Sonic 2, collect 50 rings and press A in the air. Super Sonic is invincible to all but drowning and being squished. Speed and jump height are doubled and his rings gradually decay. The same goes for Super Knuckles with increased climbing and gliding speed. But for whatever reason you don't get anything for collecting all 7 Chaos Emeralds as Tails. But we're not done. If you collect all 7 Chaos Emeralds before Mushroom Hill, you gain access to the Super Emerald stages where you play the special stages from Sonic and Knuckles, and upon collecting all Super Emeralds, you unlock the respective character's Hyperform, essentially Super Saiyan 2. Hyperform prevents drowning for all characters, Hypersonic gains a directional double jump that kills everything on screen, Hyper Knuckles now has a ground pound that kills everything on screen when gliding into a wall, and Super, not Hyper, Tails is ironically the best character in the game. Seriously, Tails has no impact on the plot apart from being everyone's cab driver when they fall from space, but he gets the best Hyper Form, or Super Form, whatever. Faster flying and a squadron of flickies that kill anything that moves. Do not fuck with this man. While I started this section off by stating how minimal the difference in game feel is between controlling Sonic, there is just so much more stuff in Sonic 3 and K than 2. More characters, items, bonus stages, hyper forms, and I haven't even talked about the design yet. Sonic 2 is like a roller coaster that is really great. Fun to ride a few times, but gets stale. Sonic 3 is like a theme park filled with quality rides for all ages. The experience is just as good and a little different each time. Like I said earlier, S3 and K built on the foundation of what prior Sonic games already had and design is no exception. This game's sprites and environments are beautiful. Its visuals definitely fall on the more realistic side of the realistic psychedelic spectrum, Sonic CD being on the latter side. There are a few exceptions, but the level design is top notch. Much like Sonic 2, these levels are built for speed, and each stands out with its own unique tropes. Not to mention, every act ends on a boss. Act 1 bosses pit your character against a robotic machine, and these can range from simple and lazy to unique and well thought out. Act 2 bosses are more traditional, featuring Robotnik or Egg Robo piloting a mech. 90% of these are fantastic. Each one asks the player a different question on how they'll go about damaging it. Most of the time it's just boop it on the head, but even in those situations there's often a twist that's thrown in. Selecting Sonic, Tails, or the combo of the two will get you the traditional level layouts and bosses. Knuckles mode will mix the level design and bosses up slightly to accommodate his climbing and gliding abilities. So the game begins in Angel Island Zone, and right after gaining control we are taught how to play Sonic again in the first few screens. The very first slope is impassable unless we have the necessary momentum through a long running start or a spin dash, highlighting the importance of maintaining speed. We are reintroduced to springs and breakable objects in a safe environment, and shown new set pieces like zip lines. You could argue Green Hill and Emerald Hill do a better job of introducing new things in a more gradual pace. Angel Island could potentially be seen as a clusterfuck to brand new players, like the developers are assuming we've played Sonic 2. But honestly I wouldn't know, I've been playing this game for almost 20 years and it's hard to gauge if a new player would see it that way or not. Regardless, Angel Island is a gorgeous zone whether or not it's on fire and has one of the best music tracks in the game that perfectly fits the aesthetic of a floating island jungle in the sky. Hydro City Zone No wonder this was brought back in Sonic Mania as the feature water level as it's hands down the best designed water level in the series. Well placed springs and conveyor belts make underwater traversal bearable and we get to see Sonic run on water. Tight. Marble Garden Zone one of the more underrated zones, it runs a bit long and the tops are a major pain in the ass, but the robotic fight where Tails is holding Sonic in the air makes it worth it. Also, Knuckles gets his own unique boss fight, which is pretty neat. Carnival Nights. My least favorite zone in those of Sonic 3, there are just a tad too many of these white and red bumper spheres and the infamous red barrel of doom. 
All you have to do is hold up and down to proceed past this barrel, but nowhere else in the game does it ask you to do anything remotely similar to this. Also, the King of Pop himself, Michael Jackson, contributed to this music track as well as Ice Cap and the end credits theme. Ice Cap Everything about this zone is perfection. The music, Sonic on a snowboard, no ice physics, and I love these pendulum platforms that require speed to be lifted up. The bosses could have been a little stronger, but it's tied for my favorite Sonic 3 zone next to Angel Island. Launch Base I think the transition of Sonic popping out of the snow to start this zone off is genius. Uh, unfortunately, the ending boss, Big Arm, was cut from the S3 and K version and can only be accessed if you play Sonic 3 standalone, but you can download ROMs to fix that. We then move on to the Sonic and Knuckles portion of zones, and you'll notice the game's difficulty takes a nosedive to easy, while the Sonic 3 zones gradually ask a little bit more from the player with each progressing zone, Sonic and Knuckles' difficulty fluctuates. Mushroom Hill, by far the easiest zone in the Sonic and Knuckles portion, Sonic casually rips off Mario by having a level full of mushrooms. Like a lot of zones, the level aesthetic really changes as you proceed, with the forest around you looking more and more dead until you destroy Robotnik's device that is spreading the... disease? Flying Battery Zone. Uh, first off, the zone transition to actually get here is genius. Like, whoever made that needs to get in contact with Christian Whitehead and fill in all the ones missing for Sonic Mania. Like, this man deserves a Nobel Peace Prize. You'll also notice that Flying Battery ramps the difficulty back up, throwing bottomless pits and magnified spike balls into the mix. After Flying Battery, get ready for the marathon of a level that is Sandopolis. I love the desert theme and how Act 2 is spent in a pyramid being chased by ghosts, but Christ, this level is long, so long that if you spend too much time twiddling your dick on the sand slides, you will time over. It's probably the most stressful Sonic level to date. You gotta worry about pulling levers so ghosts don't molest you, actually moving through the level quickly so you don't run out of time, which is difficult unto itself because numerous parts of the level require the player to open these timed gates where if you fail, you have to run back to the gate switch. And to top it off, you're doing this while moving through small claustrophobic spaces that are filling up with sand which spells out impending doom of being crushed. Thankfully, the preceding zone, Lava Reef, gets things back on track with its great soundtrack and one of the greatest build-up boss sequences in the series. There's a short auto-scroll section where you see the death egg glowing in the background, and then a fight with Robotnik at the bottom of a lava waterfall. Or lava fall, whatever. Hidden Palace Zone. Only Sonic visits this zone as it serves as the cooldown slash calm before the storm level. We fight Knuckles and see some story building, but there's no actual obstacles or badniks. Sky Sanctuary. This is my favorite zone and music track in the entire collection. I love the bright color palette and how Mecha Sonic serves as the final obstacle to the Death Egg. Plus, the ending transition of Sonic running up the falling tower before boarding the Death Egg is freaking awesome. Death Egg Zone, the final regular level of the game. Once again, killer soundtrack and level design that will put your 2D Sonic skills to the test. We also get to reverse gravity, something that would return in the final levels of future Sonic titles. Doomsday Zone, the true final level only unlocked if all Chaos or Super Emeralds have been obtained. Super or Hypersonic must chase down Robotnik with the Master Emerald while maintaining his falling ring count. It's exciting and can be hectic when your rings are low. In fact, Sega liked it so much they decided to place a segment like this in countless future games. But as it stands here, it's a perfect way to end a phenomenal game. And that's Sonic 3 and Knuckles. In my opinion, I think it's still the closest thing we have to a perfect Sonic game today. Uh, and it still holds up really well today. Um, it's right next to like Super Mario World and Super Metroid is like the greatest platformers of all time. Um, so if you haven't already, go out, give it a chance. Um, you won't regret it. Um, and with that, everybody, uh, thank you for watching and have a good night. Peace.